And if any of you have had to pass technology on to your wife and have them find out that it doesn't work the way that you think it should, you know how troublesome that can be. Hey, welcome to GT Canada. Today I want to review the Mi Stick created by the same company that makes the Mi Box, the Android TV Mi Box. Now what's so special about this stick is that it has similar specs to the Mi Box, which is an Android 9.0 spec TV box that has Chromecast built in. So for the price of an Android Chromecast device, you're only paying an extra $10 to get the Mi Box. The Mi Stick is cheaper than a Chromecast, which allows you to stream from your phone or your computer or any device to a TV. It essentially turns pretty much any TV into a smart TV. The added benefit of this is that it's actually powered by Android directly, which means you have an open Android Play Store, which means you can install games and apps, specifically the Kodi app, which allows you to stream live TV and stream play back TV from a bunch of different internet sources. This device then promises to allow you to play your Disney Plus, your Amazon Prime TV, your Netflix. It's an actual Netflix approved device, which means you can install the Netflix app, which will work properly with a remote control. Most Android TV boxes do not allow you to install the Netflix app for Android devices, which means that you will not be able to click through it properly. So add on top of that, the fact that it's a Chromecast device means that this really is the all-in-one TV box. But does the Android Mi TV stick provide a cheaper option with the same features? The short answer is yes, it does. It has a slower processor, less RAM, no real onboard storage. You are limited to streaming only. The device also is, it's the size of like an Amazon Fire Stick. It'll plug right into the back of your TV directly so you don't have this annoying box that has to sit on your desktop or on your TV stand. So it allows for a much more discreet install. A couple of setbacks on this though, because there's no USB port, you can't plug in a keyboard, a mouse, maybe a USB stick or a hard drive. It all has to stream. Now, I bought this because I wanted to use, I have a micro USB to USB-A and micro USB dongle. And I thought that this would allow me to plug into the micro USB port and give me a proper USB socket that I could then plug a keyboard or a mouse or a hard drive to and still power the device. So I did test this and this is the same one that I use on my PlayStation Mini. And so I know it works in that application exactly the same way as how I wanted to use it here. And I can confirm that it does not work. It did not have the drivers required or even recognize the extra uh, USB socket. So the reason why that would be is because this is only to power the device and they have not hooked up the other pins that would be required to use as a USB device. So it will not function with any USB device even if you add that breakout cable. The other side effect that I was not aware of at the time is heat. I bought two of these devices. One of them works beautifully, exactly how it is. The other has started overheating and crashing. So my wife was the first one to discover it. And if any of you have had to pass technology on to your wife and have them find out that it doesn't work the way that you think it should, you know how troublesome that can be. 
So my wife was using Netflix and it started crashing on her. I felt the device and it was so hot. So obviously heat was a concern. I decided I would try and modify my device to allow for heat. Maybe, you know, in a small form factor like that, it would tend to build up with heat. I used a Dremel tool and hacked away the plastic on the device, bought a heat sink system that's made for the Raspberry Pi. It was a two pack system, which gave me just enough heat sinks with thermal tape already attached. So I stuck those all over all of the metal bits that get hot on this. And you can see it made it a lot uglier and I definitely didn't do a clean job of cutting or cleaning the edges. I am not a PC modder. I'm not a modder of that sort. I will get stuff done so that it functions, but it might not look great. This is a good example of that. I then went back and rehooked it up with these heat sinks on and tested it out. And within a few minutes of clicking through and opening and closing menus, the device again power cycled and rebooted. And it took a few minutes to cool off enough that it would even power back on. So the bottom line for this device is it is not a good purchase and you would be better off buying the Mi Box S which I own a couple of. I've been using them for a year now. They are stellar boxes. They do exactly what you expect them to do. They do play Kodi with all the latest plugins and it also does sync completely with Disney Plus, Amazon, Netflix, and all of those. And there's no issues at all using that box. It does not overheat. Plus with the extra USB port in the back, it allows me to plug in a USB stick that has my favorite movies or TV shows preloaded onto it if streaming's not your thing, and it'll just play it straight off of there. It supports full 7.1 surround sound through the HDMI. Don't waste your time with the Mi TV stick. It really is a waste of time and money. It's a gamble if it'll work good or not. Some are working good, some are not. Again, the two that I've got, one works fine, the other really doesn't work fine. By the time I was done buying the heat sink kit and putting it all in, I was almost at the same price as the Mi Box anyway. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Mi TV stick. Check out some of the other videos we've got here. We've got a lot of great content. Love for you to check out the rest. Have a great day.